This is Colonel Barbara York, Commander Sparta Organisation, reporting to the United Nations Special Committee investigating extraterrestrial activity on Earth. To understand fully the incident this report covers, we have to consider events that occurred six months ago. The Special Powers Alien Reconnoiter Tactical Authority had just become operational at this time. Our early warning Planet Force system had detected an object on collision course with Earth the estimated impact zone in the Himalayas. As per the standard procedure set out in the Sparta guidelines, the Encore SC team was dispatched to investigate. Team SC2, under the command of Major Paul Dale, left with orders to follow the standard investigation procedure. 60 degrees due east, approximately 200 metres. Last check. Last reading confirmed. OK, SIP, everyone. Let's go. What? John? I've lost the signal. How? No idea, sir. I'm attempting to recalibrate the tracker. Damn it, Tilford, it's cold. That's enough, Harrison. Sorry, sir, I can't relocate the signal. OK, let's continue along the last heading. What's that over the ridge? Bloody hell. Holy John, are you reading anything? No, sir, I'm not getting anything. Right. Clark, Harrison, you wait here and maintain the communication link with SC. Telford, you're with me. My God! What is it, sir? Some kind of missile? I don't think so, John. Look, there's no evidence of any impact, only the snow displaced by its weight. It came into land, it didn't crash. Can you determine what it's made out of? Still can't get a reading on it, sir. Don't touch it. It's all right, John. That's weird. It feels warm, like it's alive. Can you hear this? What, the humming noise? No, there's something else. Something else? I don't understand, sir. <laughs> Paul? Oh, you will, John. You will. Bye-bye, Johnny. ta 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 He's disappeared. Sir? Paul? Where are you? That noise. It's going to... Sarge? Get away! Get away! We present SC5, Infiltrator, Part 1. Hello? How's the business of pills and lotion? Bingham, my old friend, how are you? I'm all right, Eric. Uh, just thought I'd call, see how you were. Especially as I haven't seen you since that uh, special project we helped set up got going. How's it all shaping up? Afraid I can't go into too much detail. A couple of hiccups, otherwise OK. How's Hannah? Fine. She got a degree in astrophysics, so perhaps you can offer her a job. <laughs> OLC. I wonder what that was. Hold on, Bingham. Who's there? Mortimer, is that you? Mortimer? How did that get broken? A blast. This will cost a fortune to replace. Who in the devil are you? Oh! Eric? Is everything all right? Hello? Eric? Well, isn't this nice? Just the two of us, Sir Eric, or can I just call you Eric? Oh, the ropes restraining you aren't too tight, are they? What do you want? Now, that's what I like about you business types. Straight to the point, no small talk, no mindless chat about the weather. You've dispensed with tedious pleasantries. It's good. You know where you are immediately. Who are you? You know, I don't think you'd believe me if I told you. You can call me Zalian. Michael Zalian. What I want, Eric, is your pharmaceutical company. You're mad. If you think I'm going to sell my business to you after oh, this... Oh, no, you misunderstand, Eric. I'm not going to buy it. You're going to give it to me. You can't be serious. Never more so. 
Do you remember the accident you and your family survived ten years ago? Oh, sorry, only your daughter and your good self came through it. Do you remember? Your poor wife? You heartless! Do you remember how you felt? Useless, if feet pathetic when the police told you she had burnt to death. Margaret! Could you imagine that pain? Magnified tenfold? <laughs> Margaret! No! I know! Say, have you ever wondered how she actually felt as she roasted? Ah! Ah! Oh, it's just like being in the bath, isn't it? Hello? What? Oh, Bingham. No, what? sorry, just got a bit of a headache. Nothing to worry about. What? How about lunch on Tuesday? What? Usual place? No. Usual time? Good. See you then. Now then. Where were we? How did you do that? Oh, I'm a man of many talents, Eric. Ah, yes. Being burnt alive. Sir, with all due respect, where in the hell are we going? That small group of islands. What's so important there? I can't answer that, Dale. My orders are to bring you to this point in the North Sea and leave you here. In the meantime, your MI6 duties are to be suspended indefinitely. What? On whose orders? On the highest authority. Who has that? The highest authority, Dale. Right, lads, we're here. Off you get, Dale. Sir, you can't just leave me on some rock in the middle of nowhere. I have my orders, Dale. Sir, I must protest. Sorry, Dale. We both have no choice in the matter. Good luck, Dale. Now what? That depends on you. Who are you? How did you get here? You'll have to forgive the cloak and dagger approach. It was a bit James Bond, I'll have to admit, but necessary. I'm Colonel Barbara York. Please follow me. What if I refuse? Well, you'll be left alone on a rock in the middle of the North Sea, without any means of contacting the mainland, away from the shipping lanes with no food or water or shelter. I doubt that even with your MI6 training you could survive very long. Oh, about a week or two, I should imagine. I don't have much of a choice, really, do I? Not really. Just wait a few seconds, Captain Dale. We'll soon be away from here. Stray Cat 3 from York, pick us up. Roger, Colonel. What's happening? Watch the sea, Captain. There's something rising out of the water. The Sparta Control Armoured Transport, more affectionately known as the Stray Cat. Sounds a bit more glamorous than scat, don't you think? What's Sparta? Later, Captain. Please climb aboard. Take us down, Commander. Yes, Colonel. My nephew would love a trip in one of these. Where are we going? You'll soon see, Captain. We're approaching the SC now, Colonel. Commence docking. Yes, Colonel. Spider Control, this is Stray Cat 3, requesting permission to dock. Roger, Stray Cat 3, use docking shaft 2. Roger, Control. Where are we going? I don't see any base or ship, just that wrecked ocean liner. Precisely, Captain. You're going inside it. It would appear so, Captain. We just have to wait for the airlock to clear. There we are, Captain. Mind the gap. Oh, don't get your feet wet. Me, Captain. Could you tell me what all this is about? Ten years ago, NASA received its last message from the first Scorpio probe. It had, by that time, left our solar system and was well on its way through the cosmos. Anyway, it encountered an object artificial in origin. Another probe? No, Captain. It was a ship. It's impossible. 
There's no government on Earth with resources to send a manned craft that deep into space. Who said anything about it being from Earth? <laughs> I like scepticism, it's healthy. However, the people on board that ship, before destroying the Scorpio probe, sent us a message. Hmm. Beam me up, Scotty? No, Captain. It was only one word. Beware. Beware of what? We don't know. But since the message was deciphered, the United Nations has set up the Sparta Project. Mm, sounds like a supermarket chain. It stands for Special Powers, Alien Reconnoiter and Tactical Authority. Sparta is a covert operation monitoring Earth's solar system for any unidentified craft. <laughs> and if any turn up, you've got rocket ships to go and fight them off. Afraid not. However, that is being worked upon. At the moment, we can only observe them in space. If they just pass through, we've no immediate threat. If they land, though, we do have our own specialist forces we can call into play. Such as? Well, we are primarily a covert operation. Can you imagine what would happen if the public were aware of the Scorpio incident? The panic it would cause? If a landing were to occur, we would dispatch a Sparta control team to investigate. If it turns out to be something that the team can't handle, we have our heavy response section. And what if your heavy response isn't enough? Best not to think of that. Ah, my office. Sit down, Captain. Drink? Please. We'd like you to head one of our teams, Captain. I'm afraid I'm not qualified or interested in alien investigation, Colonel. Ever wondered what happened to your brother? Paul died on an SAS mission in Egypt six months ago. He and his sergeant were killed in an explosion. Actually, Captain, he was on a mission for us. We had tracked an object that had entered our solar system from behind the sun. And did this object land? Yes, not far from Mount Everest in the Himalayas. From what we could gather, it was some kind of probe. Unfortunately, before we could investigate further, it exploded. There wasn't much left of Sergeant Telford. We found no trace of your brother. Our science department has fragments of the probe, but so far we can't make out anything about its origin. You're still not interesting me in your job offer. A couple of days ago, Sir Eric Craven White signed over the Craven White Company to a long-lost nephew, then died rather suddenly of a heart attack. Poor old Sir Eric. Craven White Pharmaceutical was one of Sparta's few private backers, along with Sir James Bingham, who happened to be a close friend of Sir Eric. So? Bingham phoned Craven White the night he died. During the conversation, Sir Eric was distracted by something in another room, and he ended the call rather abruptly. Nothing particularly sinister in that. Bingham felt otherwise, and called Craven White back and rigged up his answer phone to record the conversation. He briefly spoke to Craven White and finished the call. Bingham felt he'd been stupid and thought nothing of it. The next morning, while resetting his answer machine, Bingham listened to the conversation he had with Craven White. Sir James got a bit of a shock when he did. Why? Listen. Eric? Hello? It's me. Oh, Bingham! No, sorry, just got a bit of a headache. Nothing to worry about. Well? That's Paul. I, I think you'll find all the accounts up to date, Mr. Zalian. Yes, yes. Everything appears to be in order, Mr. Roberts. Craven White has weathered the recent economic problems very well. We are moving over 250,000 units a day. We are the biggest pharmaceutical company operating within the European Union, and we dominate the markets of America, Russia and China. Mr. Roberts, I'm well aware how my uncle's company is doing. I beg your pardon, Mr. Zellian, uh, but, but since the tragic passing of Sir Craven White, the staff have been a bit worried about what was going to happen to the company. Uh, Sir Eric was very popular. He always found time to chat to the staff, uh, whether it be a line manager or, or one of the school kids that work in the canteen on a Saturday. Uncle Eric was an old sweetie, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, well... Relax, think... Mr. Roberts. Well, let's keep it informal. May I call you Derek? Of course, Mr. Zalian. Uh, may I... You ca can call me Mr. Zalian. Ah. Uh, y yes, Mr. Zalian. You can pass on to all the staff here that, apart from me assuming my uncle's position, there will be no changes in policy or wages, benefits, etc., etc. Craven White Pharmaceutical 
will remain the happy little ship it has always been. That's very reassuring, Mr. Zalian. I, I can guarantee you that all the staff will be Yes, here. I bet you can. Uh, I, I have to make some changes to the basic formulae for our products, though. Changes? With respect, Mr. Zalian, it would be best to consult with our research department. We have some of the best qualified... Yeah, I think you'll find, Derek, my qualifications will far exceed any found on your pathetic little world. Mr. Zalian? I checked your file, Derek. You're an ex-army man. Yes, I was in the parachute regiment. Nasty little wound you got, wasn't uh, it? What, I, Shot in the knee, weren't you? I'd really not like to talk about it if you don't mind, us, Mr. Zalian. You still have a slight limp on May I go, Mr. Zalian? Still get the off twinge from ah, it. Ah, ah, still bad, ah, is it? Ah, ah, please, please stop. <laughs> Whatever you're doing. Once ah, you have promised ah, to serve ah, me, Derek, ah, the pain ah, will this, stop. Please, please stop. You will get ah, the ah, formula ah, of mine ah, added ah, to the main ah, vat. Ah, and then you will ah, add it to all ah, trade dispensers ah, within. In the factory. Yes, yes, say anything, just, just stop. We have plenty of aspirin in our stock, Derek. Please, please. Please stop it, stop it, please. Can I help you? Yes, I think you probably can. Uh, the name's Gregory, Brendan Gregory. I'm here for my checkup. Ah, oh, yes. Karen, can you check what the powers that be about this new cryo unit being delivered today? I don't want to use up this much space in the medical lab unless it's absolutely necessary. Yes, Doctor. Oh, Lieutenant Gregory has arrived for his checkup. Oh, right. Be for you in a moment, Lieutenant. Uh, that's Dr. Jacobs? Yes. Mm, she seems, um, uh, pleasant. Uh, come in, Lieutenant Gregory. Make yourself comfortable, Lieutenant. Uh, Brendan. Sorry? Uh, please, uh, call me Brendan. All right. There are just a few questions I would like to ask you before we begin the examination. No, ask away. I only recently had my examination for the SAS Engineering Division, which I may add I passed with flying colours. I have had excellent health throughout my life, apart from when I had my appendix at minus 21. Uh, would you like to inquire as to my marital status? Well, which is single, I might add. Well, that's very interesting, Lieutenant. However, I'd just like to stick to my questionnaire. Uh, of, of course, of course. I have two older brothers, uh, both extremely fertile. One has four children, the other has three. Mm. I, of course, have none of my own. Uh, being a single, you understand. Uh, oh, are you married, Doctor? Mm, Lieutenant Gregory, this isn't really relevant to the interview. Now, if I may continue? Uh, by all means. Uh, perhaps later we could have a look around the base together, uh, get to know each other better, that sort of thing, and... Um... Mm, perhaps we'll go straight to the examination itself. Uh, by all means, Doctor. Uh, where would you like me to put my clothes? Keep your clothes on, Lieutenant Gregory, and just stand there. This won't take a second. Congratulations, Lieutenant. You're in excellent health. Jacob's here. Doctor, when you've finished with Lieutenant Gregory, could you have him meet me in briefing room two? Yes, Colonel. Uh, well, Lieutenant, that concludes your examination. The SC teams are usually made up of four people, each with specialised skills that might be required for a mission. Your brother was the team leader for SC2. You'll be in charge of SC5. SC5? Sparta Control 5. This is just a one-off mission, Colonel. Once we've found out whether that's Paul or not, I'm back at MI6. Understood? Well, as you wish. Captain Dale, may I introduce you to Lieutenant Commander Jennifer McCallum? She'll be your scientific expert and second-in-command. Nice to meet you, Captain. Now I'd like to introduce both of you to Lieutenant Brendan Gregory, weapons and engineering specialist. Captain... The commander. Team SC5, your mission brief is to investigate Michael Zalian, who inherited Craven White Pharmaceutical. This isn't exactly alien phenomena, Colonel. We suspect this Zalian could be Major Paul Dale. Paul? We believe that Zalian murdered Sir Craven White. Sir Eric was a great benefactor to the Sparta project. If Zalian and Paul Dale are the same person and involved in his death, I want to know why. Excuse me. And, uh, where did you serve, Captain? I wanted to talk to you about Navy. That. Is it? Is it ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. And uh, what about you, Commander? What's your background? Oh, not military, I'm afraid. I was lecturing at Oxford before I joined Sparta. Thank you. Oh, and uh, what did you lecture in? Space and time, and how it affects man's perception on reality. Oh. Colonel, I thought you said the teams are usually made up of four. Correct, Captain. Let's go and meet the fourth member.
I don't care whether she's in a meeting or not. I want to speak to the Colonel now. Colonel York is unavailable at the moment. Karen? Doctor? Did you know anything about this? They don't tell me anything. Ah, Colonel. Just the person. How in the hell can you justify what you've done to this poor man? I don't need to, Doctor. He's dead. This is the most unethical, immoral, inhuman thing I've ever encountered in my career. I refuse to have any part of this. Organic matter is used as part of its programming. It isn't a living thing. The EEG indicates brain activity. He's still alive. You're overreacting. It's just a machine, another tool for Sparta. To you, maybe. I can't agree with any of this. I resign. If you have a written resignation on my desk by tomorrow morning, I might consider it. Meantime, get the machine online. Do it yourself. Doctors, eh? Well, Captain, meet the fourth member of your team. TS-1, what is your status? All systems are operating within normal levels. Sergeant Telford was caught in an explosion. I'm afraid there wasn't much left of him. Our science team managed to salvage some brain matter and attempted to reconstruct Telford's memory to ascertain whatever may have happened to Major Dale and why the probe exploded. Unfortunately, no memory of that incident was retrievable. However... The Sparta scientists decided to use the brain matter for the building of a prototype cyborg, a super soldier, as the muscle of an SC team. We could have the years of combat experience of an SAS sergeant programmed into a body that wouldn't tire and be virtually indestructible. A full list of the cyborg's capabilities will be made available to the team before you leave. You called it TS-1? Oh yes, Toy Soldier 1. It has been programmed to respond to you, Captain Dale, as its commanding officer. You can order it to answer to any name you like. You have your orders. Report to the main hangar at 0800 hours. Poor old Telford. CS1, what are your mission um, parameters? Ensure the safety of the Sparta control team at all times. Obey the team leader's orders except in situations where the team's or an individual team's member's safety may be compromised. We can't call you TS1. Makes you sound... Like something a boy racer would drive. TS1, you will respond to the name of John Telford. Or just John. Is that clear? Understood. Well, let's all get some sleep for tomorrow. John, report to the main hangar at 0800. Understood. Come on, let's go. Good night, John. Don't be silly, Brendan. It's only a machine. Sorry. Doctor? Oh, my God. They've even made it look like you. Dr Jacobs? Yes, Dr. Useless Jacobs. Help me, Dr. Jacobs. Help me. Come in. Yes, Miss Too Good. Mr. Roberts reports that the changes you ordered have been implemented, Mr. Zalian. Excellent. An inspector from the Department of Health and Safety will be calling tomorrow at 10am, Mr. Zalian. Do you want me to deal with them? No, I'd better handle that. We don't want them to think I don't take an interest in my staff's welfare, do we? No, Mr. Zalian. No. You have all done very well. Since I took over from Sir Craven White... All the staff have worked very hard to make the changes I requested. You are all excellent slaves. Thank you, Miss Toogood. Do you may go. I must concentrate. Contact my people out there in the vastness of space. Hear me. Hear me. Stage one is in place. So far, everything is proceeding as planned. Understood. The way for the Estrians is being prepared. ST5 featured Craig Stevens as Mark Dale, Debbie Murphy as Jennifer McCallum, Mike Peart as Brendan Gregory. Mike Wells as John Telford, Olga Rocco as Barbara York, Jan Cameron as Sue Jacobs, Karen Evans as Kelly Tubin, and Kevin Clark as Zalian. 
special appearances by Mike Betteridge as Sir Craven White, Tom King as Dale's boss, and Nigel Shadforth as Sir Charles Bingham. SC5 was created by Stephen Parr and Mike Peart. Written and directed by Stephen Parr. Engineered and produced by Pete Booker with Jag.